Chiloquin, Oregon was incorporated in 1926. During the early years following incorporation, the town was known as Little Chicago due to its rowdy reputation. Formerly, industry was primarily that of lumber mills, the closure of which has quieted the town and caused the economy to decline. The tribes in this area have a rich history, but we will just touch on the basics. In 1864, a treaty was negotiated with the tribes of Klamath, Modoc, and Yahuskin, in which 20 million acres of land was ceded to the federal government, while 2 million were set aside to establish a reservation. Previous to this, the Klamaths lived along the Klamath Marsh, Agency Lake, Pelican Bay, Link River, in the uplands of Sprague River Valley, and by the Lower Williamson River. The Modoc's traditional lands included the Lower Lost River, around Clear Lake, and land that extended south as far as the mountains beyond Goose Lake. The Yahuskin bands inhabited the area east of the Yamsay Mountains, south of Lakeview, and north of Fort Rock. With the Treaty of 1864, the Klamath, Modoc, and Yahuskin were merged into a single tribe for federal recognition and were condensed onto what had exclusively been Klamath territory. By the 1950s, the wealth of the Klamath tribes had grown, primarily due to reservation timber. In 1954, the Klamath tribes' federal recognition was terminated despite protests from the tribe themselves and the Bureau of Indian Affairs. 1.8 million acres of land was taken by condemnation alongside the termination. Despite the turmoil this caused, the tribe's federal recognition was restored in 1986 and they have experienced a high growth rate since. Chiloquin enjoys great scenic beauty and is surrounded by Basin, Range, and the Cascade Mountains. The Williamson and Sprague Rivers converge in the Chiloquin area. Additionally, Upper Klamath Lake and Agency Lake are nearby, with numerous wetlands, marshes, and creeks existing in and around the Chiloquin area. Highway 97 is the thoroughfare that leads to Chiloquin from Klamath Falls, which is approximately 29 miles, or 37 minutes, away. The population of Chiloquin consists of 734 people according to the 2010 census, however the count according to the residents is approximately 750 people. The majority age range is 55 to 59 years old. The poverty level in Chiloquin is quite high. The majority income level is at or less than $10,000 per year, and 40.7% of all residents live below the poverty line. 49.2% of the population identify as Native American, 40.7% identify as Caucasian, and 6.5% identify as Hispanic or Latino. Community resources in Chiloquin include, but are not limited to, two family markets, a hardware and home goods store, a library, a community center, an airport, the Chiloquin Food Pantry, and Chiloquin City Park. Additionally, the tribal administration is located in Chiloquin. Local education includes the Chiloquin Public School System, as well as the Sage Community School and Falcon Heights Alternative School. Emergency services include the Chiloquin Volunteer Ambulance Service and Chiloquin Agency Lake Rural Fire Protection District. Chiloquin Open Door Clinic and the Tribal Health and Wellness Center provide medical service. Valence Pharmacy will deliver limited pharmaceuticals to Open Door for accepted patients. Through our assessments, we found a strong sense of community in Chiloquin, Oregon. The residents realize that they are a rural community and therefore become reliant on each other for many of their needs. Some quotes we received are, We have a lot of people taking care of people, like neighbors taking care of neighbors. There are lots of volunteers. Everybody pulls together to help each other out. And neighbors help each other out. That's what we do. There is also a great sense of pride held by the residents of Chiloquin. Chiloquin is home. An additional strength to the community is the surrounding natural beauty and the outdoor recreation activities, like hunting, fishing, and hiking. Throughout the primary data collection process in Chiloquin, many reoccurring concerns were expressed by the community members. These include perceiving a lack of police presence, activities for youth, drug and alcohol abuse, domestic and criminal violence, access to nutritious foods, and inadequate health care services. The lack of full-time policing is perceived to be a huge deficit and risk to the community by the residents. In our assessments, multiple residents have reported situations of calling for police service in emergent situations and receiving either no response or a delayed response. The police situation is also purported to be an influencing factor in the lack of a bank or pharmacy. Additionally, the lack of police services negatively affects the EMS's ability to respond to calls involving acts of violence. 
Residents report that the deficiency in police services makes them feel unsafe outside their homes. The city government would like to acknowledge that they have made measures to address the deficit of police services with the installment of surveillance cameras, state police patrol at least once per day, a probation officer at the community center, and a resource officer five days per week at the local schools. Many residents of the community expressed concern regarding the abuse of drugs and alcohol. It was reported that only few of the calls for help received by the EMS were medical emergencies. The rest pertained to situations surrounding drugs or alcohol. Regarding the level of intoxicated persons in the community after dark, a member of the community quoted, I will not walk downtown at 2 a.m. Many individuals in the community wish for better activities for the local youth and adolescents, including organized activities like more team or group options, as well as employment opportunities for those of age. Both criminal violence and domestic violence are great concerns of the community. Evidence of domestic violence, both spousal and child, has been directly witnessed by residents of the community. Two surveys returned were completed by sixth grade students at the elementary school. Both students rated levels of child abuse in the community as poor and wished for violence and bullying to cease. Some residents have stated concern regarding access to healthy foods. The local markets predominantly carry convenience foods, which they do not consider a viable option for a healthy diet. This requires the residents to travel for groceries, which takes away from the local economy of Chiliquin, as well as puts a strain on individual resources. If traveling is not an option due to time or economic constraints, the residents' food options are of a low nutritious value, which then impacts overall health. The most significant finding of this community's assessment is a major source of contention. Each individual we spoke with was very dissatisfied with the clinical services provided by Chiliquin Open Door. This situation has a complicated history, but in short, the community formerly had two separate medical providers, an MD and an FNP, both of whom are remembered fondly by the residents of the community. These clinics were replaced by the services now provided by Open Door. However, at the time of the assessment, it was acknowledged that the proposed services made by Open Door, including the promises of dental services, had not been fulfilled, leaving the community with needs unmet and a feeling that they, yet again, have been lied to. On a broader spectrum, the lack of adequate medical services offered in Chiliquin causes a strain on other resources. Individuals in the community are referred to the emergency room at Sky Lakes for situations that do not require emergency care due to lack of urgent care options in the community, and the volunteer ambulance is utilized for medical assistance that, again, does not call for that level of service. The community feels that they deserve better and that this situation is another example of the lack of regard for the well-being of the residents by the powers that be. Additionally, the community feels challenged by the lack of dental services and a pharmacy, the absence of which demand a commute to Klamath Falls. This is a strain on their individual economic resources. The lack of pharmaceutical services, as well, may impact medication adherence due to interruption of refills.